ministry, amen? amen? But when you start declaring deliverance, when you start saying, I want to be free from this, when you start saying, I don't want to be this way no more, when you say, I want to walk away from this, I don't want to look back to the old man or old woman, the enemy tries to come in and distract you mm -hmm. and destroy you and kill you if by any means necessary. So this whole month we will be talking about, I am delivered. There's a series every Wednesday, every Sunday we will be talking about deliverance. We want to orchestrate this thing in excellence that we can share with people at the end of the month to walk in deliverance. We already started on Wednesday, truth and confession. We're coming out of our mouths and our spirits that we labor with our brothers and sisters, but we found out who one another was on Wednesday. Amen. Right. So if you missed it, I advise you to show up Wednesdays and come out if you really want to be free, if you really want to expose the enemy, the dark secrets in your life, then come on out and show up. If you want to be a hypocrite, if you want to be false and phony, don't show up. Mm -hmm. Amen. We were looking for people that want to be free, the chains and shackles loosed off, and you bury the chains yeah. under the blood of Jesus. Amen. 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 Today we want to talk about the truth of my confessions. Before you get carnal on me, we're not talking about Usher. We're not talking about the baby on the other side. I want to get it right with you, boo. I messed up. But we're talking about this spiritual thing. The truth of my confessions is. A lot of people confess, but there's no truth in what they're confessing. A lot of people believe that they're living right, but the action doesn't portray what your mouth is saying. The Bible says that I hear you, but your heart is far from me. We say that we love Jesus. We say that we're saved, but your lifestyle and your actions don't portray that. I'm already going to prepare you. You're not going to shout today unless you get delivered. This month is not for that. If you shout, you want to be free. If you dance, that's up to you. If you don't want to give no more, that's between you and God. But I've got to deliver what God has spoken to my life Amen. for the ministry. Amen? Amen. The truth of my confessions. Let's just talk about Usher for a minute while I brought him up. He has a song where he's crying his heart out, where he's telling this young lady, I had a honey on the side, and she came and told me that she was pregnant. Now I got to figure out how to tell you. I got to figure out how to tell you, and you still want to be with me. Brother, you should have made that part three. And said, when I come and tell you, I already knew it was over. Why is it that, let's just stick with us, the kingdom, the body of Christ, that when we're going into the place of doing wrong, there's no guilt, there's no conscience, there's no, no feeling, no bad vibes about it. But as soon as the act is done, sympathy and compassion wants to be released upon you. <laughs> Conviction wants to be in your life. Now you feel remorseful about what you've done. Most of the time it's because you got caught. Yes, sir. Right. Most of the time it's because it's the man or woman that pulled you on the carpet. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm leaving the church. They done exposed me. God was trying to expose you for a month. <laughs> but you didn't want to tell your story because you thought you were going to get away with it. Mm -hmm. But I'm here to tell you, many are called, but few are chosen. If you're chosen, you got to have some get right. right. Amen. If God wants to use you for his work, you got to have some get right. right. Yeah. He can't put his new wine in a nasty vessel. If he got his new wine, his new anointing, his new power, he can't put it in a bag that's patched up where you're trying to hold on to that same old flask and it's rusty and got a hole in the bottom of it. When you pour the wine in it, it's going to leak out. Y'all catch that one in a minute. The truth of my confessions. We're going to focus on 1 John chapter 1, verses 5 through 10. You pray for your your, uh, your family members, your your peers of the church, that the enemy tries to dupe us from when God is speaking to the ministry. Pray for mother in the hospital. I think she was supposed to go on vacation, something like that. And the enemy playing tricks. 
We got to pray for those that are absent. The enemy, it's not their fault, but the enemy keeps us from where he knows that we need in our lives. As I always say, if we're talking about house and land, he wants us to pack the church out. But when we're talking about getting right, it don't happen. When you're talking about getting right church, it doesn't happen. Amen. We got 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 through 10. Today I threw you for a loop. I'm going to be reading from the Amplified on this particular reading. Amen. Amen. Because I wanted to get some understanding. I wanted us to comprehend what we're talking about. The Word of God reads, And this is the message, the message of promise, which we have heard from Him and now are reporting to you. God is light, and there is no darkness in him at all. No, not in any way. So if we say we are partakers together and enjoy fellowship with him, when we live and move and are walking about in darkness, we are both speaking falsely and do not live in